Right. Okay. So in that case, th- that's the second thing that's a problem. Let's move on to China, which is the ascendant power in your book. Uh, by the way, the Wall Street Journal said you were in the thrall of Beijing and that you explained away China's refusal to democratize. I'm t- I didn't write it. No, I, right? no, no, I got it. I, I got it. So first talk about that. You've pointed to China as the next great power. And I think a lot of people feel that way. I have been talking about it quite a bit from the technology perspective, because many people I trust are like, this is where it's going. You can see the innovation in that country, in that regard, in the sector I focus in on. Talk a little bit about why you have such, I'm going to say regard for China, because I suspect you not you don't like what they're doing to the Uyghurs and refusal to democratize. But talk about where you think that country is right now. Um, uh, I will, uh, I will, and I'll explain it. And I also say, one of the great concerns that I have is that we're almost in an environment in which it's difficult to be objective and say um, there are pros and cons that we could look at. And that lapse absence of understanding or even trying to say there are pros and cons that we need to look at objectively can be taken of the fact that I'm in China's pocket or anti-American or something it's almost become a McCarthyism in a sense. So um, that phenomenon is interesting in and of itself. But okay, my background is that first, I have to be objective. Uh, You know, I place bets and and my performance can be measured to three decimal places or something. But I've been going to China since 1984. My experiences has been in helping them build their financial system and having interactions that had nothing to do with politics. It was just getting to know each other. And that's put me in a position of getting to know a lot of people from uh, very simple poor people to people who are in the highest positions of authority that gave me some understanding of where they're coming from. Since I went there in 1984, per capita income has increased The life expectancy rate has increased by 10 years. The poverty rate measured by hunger has gone from 88% to less than 1%. And so I think almost anybody looking at that would say, wow, here it is, 1.4 billion people making a transformation. That's quite something. And there's a force behind that that exists. So it would be, in my opinion, um, I don't know, stupid or, or naive to say, okay, China is not a rival. We shouldn't worry about that rivalry or something along those lines. Mm -hmm. Right. But uh, talk about that idea of McCarthyism, saying they're strong. You can say they're very strong and obviously moving forward and past us. I've heard from that from many leaders in the military and technology, et cetera. So how do you square their record on human rights with this incredibly vibrant economy and innovative economy? How do you look at that together? Um, I think it's an an incredibly difficult question for everybody who is doing business or is even consuming the goods. You know, how can you be informed about everything and you make those judgments? So, uh, for example, everybody who's buying uh, Nikes, everybody who's buying uh, Apple products, 20 percent of the items that are manufactured items imported come from China. And many, many businesses, they're connected and they're operating that way. And they're all really looking for the guidance from the countries that they're dealing with. In other words, I'm looking for guidance from the United States. And I need to follow the rules of those particular places and find those. And I can't be an expert in all of those particular dimensions. Most importantly is that I follow the rules and operate that way. But I think the real question is, Who's responsible for making those assessments of the pros and cons, right? I think we need more law and clarity because if we're going to be in a legal society in which there's guidance, it's not just that we all individually form these opinions and do it. I don't know what it's like to be in their shoes. I don't know enough about all of those issues to be able to make those types of decisions. I rely on the government. 